And we have three pieces of scripture today. Our first piece of scripture today comes from Ephesians uh, chapter 2, verses 14. The next one, Philippians 2, 2 through 4. And lastly, John 13, verses 34 through 35. Hear you now the reading of the scriptures. For he is our peace, and his flesh he has made both groups into one, has broken down the dividing wall, that is, the hostility between us. Make my joy complete. Be of sound mind, having the same love, being full accord of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not into your own interest, but into the interest of others. I give you a new commandment, that ye love one another, just as I have loved you. You should also love one another. And by this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Different today. It's the flavor of being one community, even though we come from a lot of different backgrounds, because this is World Communion Sunday. It's the Sunday that we celebrate that we are all one in Christ. Before I get into the message, I want to mention that I know there are some people in, in our worship with us that have yet to join the church. And if you're interested, Will and I will be meeting uh, with anyone who wishes to uh, join or would like to talk to us about this next Sunday between the two worship services. So over in the fellowship hall, about 10 o'clock, we'll be meeting with anyone who wishes to join. And we'll talk to you with what we call um, uh, coffee with the pastors. I don't know what Will's going to have because he doesn't drink coffee. I guess he'll have to have his sun drop, diet sun drop. Um, but I invite anyone who wishes to come be with us to do that. When Ariel and I arrived in Cambodia, there were a lot of people waiting for baptism. For you see, in the Methodist tradition, we baptize using only ordained ministers or those who have been set aside by the bishop to do the, uh, the baptisms. And so there are a lot of people there waiting for someone to come and baptize. And so when I got there, I went to this one church that had 46 youth and young adults waiting to be baptized. And the worship took place under a house. Ariel remembers this. It took place under the house. And as I was speaking, there were some people over here on the side stirring a vat of wine that they were making. Had nothing to do with the church. That's just what they were doing. Then we walked out from the church down a small trail to a pond where, that was used for watering the rice paddies. Now, this was the most muddy pond, muddiest pond you have ever seen in your life. It had slime. It was yucky. But the Cambodians have not yet understood the significance of a baptismal fault. You still had to do the dunking, all right? So I went into that water, and I baptized 46 people. After the baptism service was over, the boys came out, and they stripped down to nothing, and they started jumping into the water, just having a wonderful time. The girls just watched because they're not allowed to, to, to go into the water like that in their culture. I got out of the water and the mud and all that muck, and I pulled a couple leeches off of me. It was horrible. I got a towel for my wife, got an extra change of clothes I brought with my wife, and I went up into the woods, and I took off everything, and I began to wipe all this muck off of me. I looked up, and there were 25 sets of eyes watching me. <laughs> Every child had followed me up the hill. Afterwards, the pastor shared with me they had never seen an American before, and they wanted to see if the American looked like they did. <laughs> preacher, preacher and professor Fred Craddock shared a story about one of his very first pastoral appointments. He said that they had a fund they called the emergency fund. The fund was used for anyone who needed help, and he could use it for anyone who needed help, but it had some stipulations. He could not use it for a person who was late, who, who was in that position because of laziness, drunkenness, or poor management. Fred Craddock said, what else is there? He said, they still have the money. <laughs> Let's face it, folks, we're all prejudiced. 
We all have a way within us where we look at people, we find them where they are, and we, we say yes or no to have no relationship with them, right? We make judgments. We've been asked to make a judgment within the last several months about a religion. Muslim religion, the Islam religion, is, is the one that a lot of people are putting up with ISIS and with all these other terrorist groups. Let's face it, these terrorist groups are not Muslim because they're not following the Muslim religion, but yet we hear Muslim alongside of them. I heard these statements in the news recently. They are all terrorists talking about Muslim people. No, they're not. I know a lot of Muslims. They're not all terrorists. Most of them are very benevolent, very much giving people. I heard a presidential candidate want to be say recently, their religion is about killing anyone who does not believe their beliefs. Again, not true. The Quran, their holy books, actually says they are not to kill anyone who is in the book. In the book is anyone who believes in the Old Testament. So that'd be the Christians and the Jews. But sadly, they've taken that some, some of the people have taken this and they've gone the wrong way with it and they have not listened to their own religion. I heard someone recently say they worship another God, not the God of the Jews or the Christians. And again, not true. The word God in the Hebrew language is Elohim. It comes from the, the root word El, which means master. Al is the Aramaic word for, for El. And Allah is their name of their God, which means the master or the God. Did you know that every religion in the world has the golden rule as part of their religion? Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Once we find we have truths that we can talk about, let's talk about the truth. Then we can start talking about our differences and find out how can we start to communicate and work with one another. It's well that we do not judge. But we do judge, don't we? Christians today are being judged in some countries because of what the Crusades did a thousand years ago. In some countries, Christians are judged because of how the missionaries acted 150 years ago. All Catholic priests are looked upon and people wonder, hmm, is he like the one I just read about in the newspaper? And let's face it. These are the same charges that were brought against the Jews by the Nazi Germans. This is the same, same charges brought against the Palestinians by the Jews. The same charges brought against the, by, against the Native Americans by the American settlers. Didn't we call them savages? We judge. We have prejudice. Look at how she's dressed. You've heard that? Can you believe he said that? Maybe it's the color of the skin. Maybe it's a lifestyle. Maybe it's the way someone approaches issues, but we judge. We have to recognize that we are different from people, but that doesn't mean we have something we need to fix about these people. We're just different. It's part of this broken, fallen condition we call humanity. Today's World Communion Sunday is a recognition that we have differences and, and yet we as Christians can still, even though we may look at life a little differently, we can still work together and maybe we can begin looking at other peoples and realize God loves them too. All people are made in the image of God. We're Christians. We're United Methodists. We, we are founded on the understanding of Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. It's more than a religion. It's a lifestyle. It's, it's God reaching down to us and teaching us how we can reach out to others. It's the salvation through the cross, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, that teaches us that humanity can now relate back to God. It's saying that we may be a little bit different than the Baptist, or we may be a little bit different from the Catholics or the Presbyterian, but you know God loves all of us. 
On August 28, 1963, Martin Luther King delivered one of the most inspirational speeches ever given on American soil. These are some of the words he said. For all God's children, black men and white men, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics, to join hands and sing the old Negro spiritual, free at last, free at last, thank God Almighty, I'm free at last. But it's an ongoing struggle, isn't it? Humanity is broken. Humanity is, is, is fragmented. Even today, as we worship here in a mostly Caucasian congregation, there are African-American churches meeting with mostly black people in them. There are um, Asian-American churches meeting with mostly Asian in them. We're still segregated. Ariel and I arrived back in America on June 20th, 1982, and I'm, I know this is a hard decision for my wife to have made to come to America. It meant giving up her family for a while because we could not make telephone calls back and forth. Back then, to make a telephone call cost $2 a minute to make a telephone call. We couldn't afford it. It meant that she couldn't go visit because under the law, she would lose her visa status if she left the country on her Filipino visa or passport. She had to wait until she got her American passport. Imagine a decision to marry and come to America and to arrive in the big town of Stewartsville, Virginia, population 86. <laughs> Newly married, living with in-laws you had never met. In the first several weeks in America, Ariel experienced it. It was innocent, but it happened. She was treated differently. Over the next year, she couldn't find employment because people couldn't imagine someone from another country speaking English, much less teach English. And as a result, we had to work odd jobs living near poverty because of the judgments of others. I'll never forget that summer day in 1989 when Ariel received her American citizenship. We had the ceremony that morning, and then we had a cookout at the house that afternoon with some of her friends. We had the hot dogs, the hamburgers, uh, we had the apple pie, and someone brought Ariel a baseball and baseball bat. All the things that make an American an American, right? One of my colleagues said to her, Ariel, do you think of yourself as a Filipino or as an American? And she looked at him and she, she said, I'm a human being. You see, in her eyes, she could see things that we grew up with that maybe we don't see because they're hidden to us. But she could see them from the outside. And, and I shared with her that when I was in the Philippines, I could tell that Filipinos had prejudice in them too. The Filipinos in the city were light-colored skinned. Where the ones who lived out in the countryside under the sun working in the fields were darker colored and they were treated differently. There was a group of Filipinos called the Negritos. The Negritos are the original Filipinos. They are more like Africans than they are Filipinos. They're treated differently. I've seen the prejudice in, the Palest in Palestine as the Palestinians are given a number two on their ID cards, where Israelis have a number one on their ID cards. Democratic Republic of the Congo, where people who are members of the of the tribe of the president can get benefits that people who are not members of the tribe can't get. I've seen prejudice up north in America towards these southern boys and girls. <laughs> and don't forget, we have some prejudice towards those Yankees too, don't we? <laughs> Martin Luther King challenged us to go and judge people by their character. Jesus Christ tells us to take it one step further. He tells us to relate to people on the basis of God's grace. In other words, it's not about race relations, it's about grace relations. 
You'd think that Simon Peter would have understood this. Simon Peter spent so much time with Jesus. You'd think he would have understood this, but, you know, I like Simon Peter. Simon Peter had a big mouth. He must have wore a size 14 shoe, and he always put that sandal in his foot. I mean, in his mouth. Excuse me, in his mouth. He received special instruction from Jesus. He saw the miracles being performed. He walked in the water. He was at the transfiguration of Christ. Yet Peter failed to grasp the significance of spreading the gospel from the Jews to the Gentiles. Jesus had to make a special appearance with him, had to push him to go to Cornelius' house where he went into the home of a Gentile. And he understood that, you know, God loves the Gentiles too. Peter's prejudice came from his background. His, his religion taught that the Jews were better than the Gentiles. It came from an understanding that, that somehow or another their traditions are much better than that of the Gentiles. And those understandings shaped him a little bit more than even his commands of Jesus Christ did in that area of his life. But like Peter, we're shaped by our traditions, aren't we? Things that we've done all of our lives, the way we've been treating people all of our lives, we, we have a way of sometimes thinking, well, our group is better than their group. Our way of thinking is the right way. Their way of thinking is a little off. We have a way of thinking at times that God is on our side, but what does that mean about them? Is God not on their side also? Henry Blackaby wrote a book called Experiencing God, and he said this in that book. You can't go with God and stay where you are. You can't go with God and stay where you are. God sends us out of our comfort zones to places, to circumstances that require us to let our faith change how we see other people. Like Peter, we face a lot of obstacles that threaten, that threaten us. Fear of failure, apathy, coldness, busyness. I mean, over the last 50 years, we've moved the furniture around the room a little bit. We've uh, said the right words here and there, but yet we still carry that shell around us. We still find ourselves in our own little shells and we're not willing to break out and meet those people who are different than we are. Jesus taught in his kingdom has people of all ages, all races, all nationalities, all gender. He spoke to social outcasts. He crossed the racial lines. He even touched the lepers. Jesus did not just fish for the Jews. He also fished for the Gentiles. And I'm thankful he did because I'm a Gentile. Acts chapter 10. That's your assignment this week. Read Acts chapter 10. It talks about how this Peter entered the house of a Gentile and he broke down the walls of prejudice in first century Christianity. P Jesus talks, Peter talk, enters the, 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 the world and body of another group of people. And because of that, we have the opportunity to be Christian today. Who do you know that needs the grace of God? I bet you know some white people who need the grace of God, some black people, perhaps some Asian people, maybe some Hispanic people, maybe some rich people, maybe some poor people. I bet you know a few black, fat people, maybe some skinny people, young people, old people, all who need to know God loves them. So be it. Tell them. Amen. Leave this place.